Welcome back in the green now for the benchmark indices. Reliance Industries is contributing on the way up. It's up close to about a percent and a half in IT stocks. They've been the laggards this year, but you are seeing a return of these IT names over the last couple of days. Tech Mahindra Infosys have nudged up to a near 2% gain. The next uh, corporate on our radar is Med Plus Health. Uh, the revenues have seen about a 13% rise sequentially in Q2, but margins contracted due to higher losses in the diagnostic verticals. The company also added nearly 350 stores in the September quarter, which is nearly one and a half times the usual quarterly run rate. Gangari Madhuka Reddy, the MD and CEO of MedPlus Health Services, is now with us on the show. Uh, morning, this is Reema here. First, if you could tell us what is the current discounting which has been offered by you um, and also the industry per se of e-commerce pharmacy. And is it normalizing? So uh, we've always been a value player in the whole pharmacy retail market. And our discounts actually are the highest for any offline uh, and brick and mortar kind of stores. For all bills above 1,000, we give a 20% discount. And for bills below 1,000, we give a 10%. And the overall discount, as you uh, can see out there, is around 165 to 16.7%. Uh, given that 60% of our sales happen uh, to people who are buying above a 1,000 rupee bill. Uh, no, and, fair uh, enough. So that we know, you know, what happened in Q2. But if you could tell us, is there, is there a potential that the 16.5% of average discounting could come down going ahead? Generally, what is the, you know, movement that we're seeing in the industry when it comes to discounting? Unfortunately, you know, discounts have only one way of going. <laughs> uh, they never, never, never come down at all. So, uh, no, you know, we, whatever discounts we have set in our company, we set with the firm this thing that they are never going to come down. Uh, we uh, expect to actually make money at this level. And uh, the way we will expand the margins as we go forward is both, you know, because of scale, uh, which will reduce the overall cost of management at the corporate as well as the warehousing and all, and also by uh, the product mix. You know, every 1% of uh, private label increase increases our overall margin by around 0.4%. So that's the way for us to actually do it. I don't think, you know, the, uh, we will end up actually going back on the discounts. That's one. And I don't think the market itself is also going to do that. You know, we have at least three players out there on the online side who continue to uh, go um, hard on the discount at around 25% for the first three purchases, uh, which you know, which actually means, you know, for all practical purposes, you know, most people end up actually taking advantage of various people in their families to buy, you know, um, the, they make the first three purchases last forever. So as, as of now, I don't think, you know, neither us nor the market is actually going to let up on the discounts. 5% discount on the first three purchases. I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> where do you find these offers? <laughs> I mean, you know, I would love to get these. And you're saying, uh, well, you said they 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 uh, tend to make these last forever. You mean uh, what do you mean? I mean you so you you hop getting discounts from each player. I'm just... Yeah, that's right. So you know it, it's for your first three purchases, but then you can always go and you know get it in some other some other family members' uh, name, right? right? So one, two, three, you basically do that, and then before you know it, there's some other player who just wants to you know do some more land grabbing, and he comes and offers the same. Mm. So you can just keep switching between. Uh, between members of family and between mm. companies to keep the 25% forever almost. Right. So you said discounts have only got one way of going, which is uh, high, higher, and you said they'll never ever come down. I mean, and you expect to make money at these discount levels, but would you would you need to increase the level of discounting, uh, sir, given what's happening in the marketplace? Uh, no, no, I, I, I don't believe that at all. Mm. You know, given that a very small portion of the overall market, which is actually, you know, now controlled by the online side, that is doing the discount. We're not really overly concerned. Uh, you know, online at best has a 3% to 4% overall market share in the country. And even in cities in which they are strong, they have between 10 and 15. But the fact of the matter is that 85% of the market still lies with the offline brick and mortar business. And of which, um, you know, we have the best discounts. So as long as we are ahead of the pack on the rest, I don't think we are, you know, going to go and change our discount policy anytime soon. Uh, hi, Mr. Reddy. At what level do you stop making money? At 16.5% discount, you're making money. At what level, uh, you know, do you say that uh, of discounting, will uh, will it start hitting you all? If you could give us a sense on that. And also, you spoke about private labels. That's going to be the margin driver, right, going ahead. And a couple of brokerages, they are betting on that contribution going up. So where is that one headed? 
So uh, last quarter, we showed a number of around 13.9% overall private label, out of which around 8.7 to 8.8 .8 is in the pharma side. So we will continue to grow that. I can't, you know, hazard a guess on that, but, you know, it's fair to say. Uh, so we have, you know, in the past, from 2019, we have grown from 4.5% uh, to 13.9. I expect that we will show a 100 basis points kind of increase every year. So that that is on, pretty much on. The, that is guaranteed almost. Sorry, 13.9% uh, uh, share of private labels. Yeah, that's right. And that will go up uh, uh, 100 basis points every year. That's got, right. got that. Go on, sir. Sorry, I interrupted you. That's one. And uh, second, on the discounts, uh, you know, I don't think, uh, given that we don't see any problem at all in, you know, uh, in continuing our market share and in keeping up our market share without having to increase discount, I don't think there's any point at which we'll actually start losing money at all because we're not intending to increase the discount no matter what. Uh, this is basically the 16.7 or 16.8 is there. And that's a function of what we offer to the customers. We don't see any problem with, uh, you know, get, uh, with holding out our market share at that number. So your store addition in nearly 350 is significantly higher. And now you're expanding in the tier two cities. Isn't it harder to break even in tier two cities given the overall ticket size, uh, you know, tends to be on the lower side? And is there any guidance on the addition? Yeah. So uh, we actually guided to 1,000 to 1,200 stores in the year. And in the first half, we have added around 600. We'll most likely add about the same number for the rest of the year. I don't think we're really going to step up the overall number from that 1,000 to 1,200 kind of thing. And in one or two quarters, you know, it goes up and down a little bit. It also is a function of how fast we can get some of the work done and how fast can we get the licenses in place and all. Uh, so don't go by... Uh, uh, by the 350 number too much, you know, the guidance is more towards 1,000 to 1,200. And on the thing of, uh, you know, going into tier two and all, tier two, you know, we, we see, we have seven states, we, we have a major presence in seven states, all the warehouses are set in place, and we have a major presence in the cities, in the capital cities of these uh, states. Now the next step uh, for us is to go down to tier two, tier three, and tier four to maximize the overall efficiency of the supply chain. For us, uh, you know, uh, that works beautifully. On the second thing about, you know, ticket size being slightly smaller in tier two, medicines are not exactly like a, you know, a luxury kind of product out there. People have to buy them. There's not really that much difference. Uh, while definitely there's a small amount of, you know, difference, I would say, uh, not significant, A. And B, the overall cost of rentals, manpower, and also the, the better private label mix, which you see in a tier two, actually helps us make more money in a tier two. Okay. Uh, well, the absolute number may be slightly lesser. The EBITDA is actually higher there. Right. Mr. Reddy, uh, uh, I think we touched upon this last time as well because your strategy is, I mean, you had to spend to expand, right? I mean, uh, and eventually you get to a scale where, uh, you know, you start, you become uh, uh, cash flow positive, etc. You start making, uh, you, you become, you know, much more profitable than you are currently with scale. Uh, but what's the strategy? Are, are, you, are you, do you set up these stores independently do you take over running pharmacies rebrand them uh, you know sort of let the owner current the, the existing owners run these places under your brand i mean uh, can you uh, can, sure. is, can the process be fastened yeah no 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 uh, see almost all the stores which we take up are greenfield mm. we lease the store we build them out we have our own employees it's a company owned company run store uh, now uh, the market says that we are actually going too fast at 1,200 stores a year. We could definitely go much bigger if we were needed to, but I don't think we want to you know, test that at this point of time. Uh, we are happy with the pace at which we're growing. So we believe that in a market like you know pharmacy, retail and all, where the margins are really low, there's not really enough margins for us to do a franchisee or get in some other partner or someone like that. Uh, so uh, for us, company-owned strategy works very well and we are you know 100% um, capable of actually growing at the pace at which the market can take it. So that's one. Um, on the second thing, yes, you know, our store, we, we are growing fast and we will see a margin expansion as we go forward because our stores basically start delivering the full EBITDA at the end of the second year and are between the 24th and the 30th month. Given that 50% of the overall uh, network right now is under two years, uh, we are seeing a little bit of drag, but that's the only reason. And even then we are not, we, you know, uh, we are far from making losses out there. We actually make money. So that's not a problem at all. We uh, can grow profitably.
uh, sorry, at the end of the second year, you turn, a store turns? No, no, the store actually turns profitable within the third to six month only. Right. But the full EBITDA, which we, the full EBITDA potential, which is realized, is okay, only okay. realized. Okay. Okay. And you think 50% yeah. of the network right now, operational network right now, is uh, less than two years. Uh, so that's less than two years. Yeah. All right. Uh, got that. Mr. Reddy, thank you very much. Uh, great speaking with you. Appreciate you joining in. Uh, with uh, that perspective. The market, by the way, is up 20, 23 points. 18,536 is where we are at. Najib. Well, all right, let's uh, move on then. Metro Brands, they posted a good quarter, uh, you know, on a low base, but the performance is lower sequentially. The company also opened close around 28 stores, uh, you know, in the first half, but uh, they're on pace to open close around 260 stores in the next three years or so. To understand more about the company and the path ahead, we're joined by Mr. Nissan Joseph, the Chief Executive Officer at Metro Brands. Uh, hi, Mr. Joseph. Good morning. Thanks so much for speaking to us here on CNBC TV 18. Well, uh, you've opened close to 48 new stores in the first half of the year. Could you tell us for uh, the second half, quarter three, quarter four, how many new stores will you, you open? And also, quarter three is a very important uh, you know, quarter for you. Could you tell us how is demand on ground? How are things shaping up? Right. Good morning and thank you for having me. Uh, as you mentioned, we are uh, up to almost 50 stores in the first half of the year and we believe that pace will continue through the rest of the year. So we should close out the year somewhere between the 80 to 100 range, which would, which would put us on pace to hit that 260 stores that we said we would do in the first three years after listing. Uh, as far as Q3 goes, you know, we continue to have sales that meet expectations. Don't forget, we're all lapping uh, big sales from last year, uh, simply because COVID had finally given up and uh, people were out shopping. There was a little bit of pent up demand, wardrobe refreshers. Uh, but now that we're lapping that, we're happy to see that demand continues to remain consistent uh, against our expectations. Uh, Mr. Joseph, hi, good morning. Uh, any, uh, any segments, any particular price points seeing any stress out at all or uh, none at all? Yeah, I think what we're, we were pleased to see that our segment over 3,000 rupees mm -hmm. had grown considerably, uh, which speaks to the premiumization that Metro is pushing towards and speaks well that the consumer is willing to adapt uh, their buying habits to where the prices are going. We did see some pressure on those below 1,000 rupees, primarily because, you know, there was a 700 point GST raise. 700 basis point raise in GST in that price point. But the good news, we'll be lapping that as well in the next few months. So I think a lot of the good news is, while nobody's going to see those bang up numbers like we all saw because we were going against truly not comparable numbers, I think we're seeing business normalize. And as it normalizes, you know, we're pretty pleased to see where it's settling into. Mm. You uh, recently, or just last month, you made an acquisition where you will acquire the company which owns brands like Fila. And this will be a big strategic addition to your portfolio because historically, Metro wasn't big in offering sportswear. Could you tell us your plans? Uh, what was the revenue contribution currently? How much can it scale up to? Yeah, so today, uh, you know, we, we just acquired Fila and we, we've identified that sports was a big white space in our portfolio of brands. So we're quite excited about getting a global brand as Fila that plays across different genres of, you know, whether it's sports or lifestyle, quite comfortably and athleisure. And all of these are very important to the Indian consumer today. Um, you know, we, we, we know that the business is about around 100 crores that we acquired. Uh, but we also know that, you know, as with every acquisition and merger, there has to be a, a period of integration that we will go through. And everything we would do at Metro is with a long range perspective. So we're really looking at, you know, how do we set the brand up for the next five years, taking into advantage our ability to run exclusive brand stores and taking into the fact that we have 400 multi-brand stores that currently sell a lot of major athletic brands in India. All right. Uh, you know, Mr. Joseph, uh, Kravitas, the one that you all acquired, and by the way, I was a big Fila fan, I recall when I was growing up, a uh, good brand out there. But if you could tell us uh, from around 150 crores that it was doing on an annual basis, say in the next five years, as you were talking about a five-year vision, where do you see this number headed, point number one? And the second factor is your focus on premiumization. How much do premium brands contribute as a percentage of your revenues? And how is that likely to change? Yeah, so I, I don't think it's a question of premium brands. I think it's a question of premium price points, price first points. and foremost, right? Because I would like to believe 
Yeah, I would like to know that all our brands that we sell are premium. However, some brands have, you know, your typical opening price points, your good, better, best price laddering, right? So everything we sell is premium in that space that it operates. So we're quite comfortable with that. Um, as far as, you know, what is the potential for a sports brand in India? I think is the way I would look at that question that you're asking. Um, you know, we do know that uh, the the other peers in the feeler space today operate somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 exclusive brand stores. We also know that they do you know a couple of uh, anywhere from a thousand to 1500 crores in revenue. So you know these are all vectors that we will carefully consider as we lay out a plan that in typical metro fashion is going to grow. Uh, you know in a in a way that is hungry but not greedy. In a way that is thought out and thoughtful. Okay. Um, could you also, you said that, you know, for you, the FILA deal, just coming back to that, um, you know, it's a five-year plan, right? Could you tell us what is the five-year plan? What is the aspiration that you have? We have the current revenues. I think it's close to about 150 crore of uh, the brand that you've acquired. How much do you think you could scale it up to? How many EBOs, exclusive business, uh, exclusive uh, outlets that you are planning to launch for FILA? Yeah. I think the, 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 the vector that we would consider is, you know, what are its peers doing in the industry today, in the market today? And, you know, like I was mentioning, Rima, you know, there's, uh, there's most of the peers in its space of FILA operate about 300 EBOs. They do somewhere in the 1,000 to 1,500 crore range. I mean, these are vectors we would consider as we plot our roadmap for the next five years. Uh, you said uh, premium sales is, you know, uh, maybe 2,500, 3,000 rupees per pair. What do you, uh, you know... What's what's your range that you look at? Yeah, no, we would say anything over four thousand is four thousand. So, how much does that contribute as a percentage of sales? More than four thousand rupees a pair. Yeah, you know, we, we don't break it out too much, but I can assure what we're excited about in the last quarter uh, was the fact that our price points over three thousand grew the fastest. In that so, so I asked you that query, but I don't think uh, you'll disclose those numbers or you don't have that handy as of now. So maybe the next time around, we could get further clarity on that. Final question, putting everything together, price increases, input costs, sales ramp up, change of mix, margins at around 30, 31%. Do you think you can hold on to it? And what do you ha end this year with? That's FY23 in terms of revenues. Very quickly, sir. Well, I think there's a lot of forecasts that the analysts have put out there that I wouldn't care to comment on. But I also think that, you know, none of those forecasts are so unbelievably unreasonable. Uh, you know, the 30, 31 percent on EBITDA margin is something we always guide to and feel very, very comfortable with that number. Uh, we also believe that our path uh, will guide to north of 15 percent like we've always guided. So we see no reasons for this quarter to upset those two numbers. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Joseph. Appreciate you joining in. Good luck. And thank you, as always, for your time here on CNBC TV 80. Thank you. We'll take a quick break here. We'll come back on the other side. Mitesh Thakkar will be joining in for some technical trading ideas. It's uh, 10 o'clock. Markets come up the lows, and we are up 20 points, 18,533. Let's have a look at the mid-cap and small-cap part of the market, which is doing a lot better. That was the case on th uh, Friday. That was the case on Thursday. Uh, and uh, I mean, actually, uh, you know, that was the case for the bulk of last week as well. Uh, three quarters of a percent gain on the mid cap index and a little more on the small cap index at this stage. We are back more on the other side. All right, welcome back. Uh, so we've got the market, which is doing uh, absolutely fine. 20 points higher, as I just uh, highlighted before we took that break. Mid caps and small caps are doing much better. Uh, just a few names, if I can quickly highlight for our viewers. Look at RVNL. It's up 10%. Uh, That's a big move on RVNL uh, once again. And uh, the, the, the entire railway thing charges on, chugs along. IRFC is the other one, which is up 6%. Uh, you know, again, a very strong gainer. Apollo Tires is what we highlighted earlier today. Uh, that is up 6%. That's a big move. Uh, BKG, which is a recent listing, is up 4.5%. So BKG at about, what, 410 now, looking very good. Uh, Tanla Solutions, Tanla Platforms, 10, 11% higher, 817. There is JK Tires, which is up about 6%. Uh, that's a, a large move on that one. GE Shipping is up 4%. It's a new high, I think, on GE Shipping, almost at 700. I mean, what a move that one has had. Uh, Texmaco Rail, more rail, 6% uh, 6 higher, 62 on that one. Uh, Hoodco, I think it did very well last two days of... Uh, Last week, it's up another 5% uh, and a bunch of others as well, which I'll come to 
in a bit from now. Market breadth is holding very, very strong uh, at uh, 1,400 stocks, 1,500 stocks higher and about 600 stocks which are lower. Mitesh is with us to run us through what his 10 a.m. calls are. Mitesh, hi. Uh, what do you have? Yeah. So I think, Prashant, 1D buying on the early morning dip has worked out nicely and uh, we haven't gotten, you know, early close below 18,420. So I think the trend still remains on the upside, so trading with long buyers. But on the stocks that I have, one buy and one sell. Uh, Maruti is uh, looking like breaking out, so that's a buy keep. We start at about uh, 9040 here and a target of around 9150. And Marico is an underperformer, it's breaking down as well. Slightly negative start setup, so we'll uh, identify this as a short call. Uh, keep a stop at about levels of uh, 488 half and a target of around 470 on the downside. Okay, all right, Madesh, thanks uh, so much for that. Well, uh, let's move on. Let's get a word coming in from the insurance regulator now. Speaking of CNBC TV18, Chairman Devushish Panda said that they're in favor of issuing composite licenses, which is a common license to operate in the life as well as in the general insurance market. He also spoke about the long list of insurance companies in the pipeline for approval, one of which is likely to be credit access. Let's hear him out. After a gap of five years, uh, you know, 2017 was the last approval for a new uh, insurance company. Mm. And uh, after five years, today we have approved an uh, insurance company by the name of Shema, Shema General Insurance Company. So that's a matter of uh, great, uh, you know, pleasure. And uh, there's another one which is ready. Uh, we couldn't bring that proposal because their arrival of the capital will take another 15 days. It's in the pipeline. So that is called, that company is credit access. We hope. Uh, in the next uh, board, that should also get cleared. And 18 more are in the pipeline. And there are a lot of inquiries regarding setting up of new e units. For the unit linked business, without guarantees, the solvency has been reduced from 0.8% uh, to 0.6%, mm. thus freeing up around uh, 1,500 crores. Capital in the past, capital. capital will be released, which will be used for growth by the companies. So we have sent, sent a set of recommendations. Now the government to uh, consider them, them. So that's how it is. I don't know when and uh, okay. what time. You have recommended a, that a We have recommended certain sets of recommendations, yeah. I wouldn't really recall each and every detail but right now. Headline. But uh, the headline is about, you know, lowering of the capital mm. so that smaller players could come value-added services, mm. you know, one-time registration. On composite? I clearly don't remember. Probably, uh, yes. All right, let's drill it down to individual stocks. These are the stocks on the move. So first up, Nimesh is here, and his standout brokerage report has actually got the street very excited. Nimesh? Uh, thanks, Nimesh. So the stock, uh, the Twitter standard was an apologize, and that stock has reacted sharply up 5% on the back of an UBS upgrade. So they've raised a target price of 355 versus the alert of 295. Now, uh, UBS expects the ROE to double and the debt to half by FY25. The, the falling commodity prices have started uh, to inch up in the gross margin. So for FY24 and FY25, UBS expects the, uh, the EBITDA margins to improve to 13.5 to 14% versus just 10.5% uh, in, in second quarter of FY20, FY23. They expect ROE to inch up to 13% in, by FY25 versus just 6% in FY 22, and the debt to come down uh, almost to 2,600 levels versus 5,500 levels currently. Uh, the, the stock has seen a bit of a run-up of late, but even now, uh, the uh, U.S. Uh, sees the, the stock as attractive at uh, just 12 times FY 24 price to earning versus the industry peers, which are trading between 17 to 26 times. So on back of that, a big upgrade from UBS, and that's the reason why the stock has reacted 5% today. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot uh, for that. Namesh, well, from the auto space itself, Hero Motor Corp is doing pretty well. Rima, price increase and management sounding reasonably optimistic now? Uh, yes. So first, the news. Uh, Hero Motor Corp will be revising its prices for motorcycles and scooters upwards by up to 1,500 rupees. This is effective 1st of December. The exact quantum of increase will vary depending on the specific model as well as market. And this would be the company's fourth price increase in this year. The last one was in September when prices went up by up to 1,000 rupees. Now, usually, um, you know, what the company has indicated is that this price increase was an account of inflationary pressures. B, they're saying that our customers will not be impacted uh, because we will offer, we will continue to offer very innovative uh, financing. Three, 
the company has put in place an accelerated savings program which will help the company offset any further cost impact and drive an improvement in margins. So the company is looking at margin improvement and they're saying that moving forward, the economic indicators are favorable to a growth in demand and therefore they expect industry volumes to pick up in the coming quarter. So the management commentary, that of, Mr. That of the CFO Niranjan Gupta, is also very upbeat. But let's uh, talk about the oil marketing companies. Uh, Sonal, there is a JP Morgan report. Yes, and it's very optimistic on the oil marketing space that has not been doing so well so far. So they've gone ahead and they have upgraded HPCL to a buy with a target price of 285 rupees per share. On the flip side, they have actually downgraded Gale to a neutral with a target price of 105 rupees per share. This note is specifically for oil marketing companies where they say they are turning more constructive on the Indian marketing space. They expect oil prices to stabilize from here on and there are some downward risks to those targets as well. Uh, policy support for oil marketing companies companies has turned positive. We are talking about LPG grants being given to these uh, companies which actually help them contain losses in the quarter gone by and now in terms of their marketing segment which saw big losses in the quarter gone by, their losses are uh, coming down. The diesel uh, segment still seeing some losses but they have come down sharply and they are profitable on the LPG and the petrol side. This is a big EBITDA contributor to the company's financials and that's why JP Morgan is now positive on this space. All right, uh, thanks very much uh, for that, <coughs> uh, uh, Sonal, appreciate it. Well, uh, 28, 30 points lower, 18,541 is where we are uh, at at this point. And uh, it's uh, looking pretty good. Broader markets are looking even better. I highlighted a long list of stocks which are doing well with volumes in the broader space. This is what is not doing very well. So if you can have these intradays, Vedanta is down 1.6%, 311. HDFC Limited is uh, exerting a little bit of pressure on the other side, one and a half lower. Uh, there's Apollo Hospitals at 4,700, 4, which is down 2%. 2 IEX is down 2%. Hindalco is down 2%. JSW Steel is down 1.6%. So Metals, not having a great day. ITDC, I mean, the hotel company, uh, the, the government-run uh, sort of uh, ITDC is down 35 I think it saw a surge on Friday, so reversing some of that. Jindal Steel and Power is down 1.5%. Data Patterns, uh, that's a defense name, that is down about 2 and 3 quarters of a percent. That is Loda, uh, that is Macrotech developers, 3% lower, just under 1,000 rupees. And delivery is down about 2 and a quarter as well. But uh, that's basically what's going down. Uh, but the list of gainers, much, much larger. 1,500, as I said, 1,500 stocks higher. And you've got about 600 stocks which are lower overall on the NSC. We'll take a quick break here. We are back. Our special segment, it's the economy. My colleague Lata will get chatting with Santanu Sain Gupta of Goldman Sachs on the key macro trends as we await the second quarter GDP numbers due to be released this Wednesday. Stay, stay with us. Stay tuned.